McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number three of this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode on NHL 20. I guess you could call it Lottery Legends, but you know, we really haven't gotten there yet. We got to land a lot more lottery picks to do so to actually call this series a Lottery Legends franchise mode. But as of right now, the Markham Lions are currently in the AHL playoffs. They're going to be facing off against the Laval Rockets. If you missed last episode, our team did quite poorly in the regular seat. I mean, they didn't do poorly, but they did do poorly, if you understand what I mean. As in, we finished with 90 points, but we missed the playoffs. As you can see right in there, Montreal missed the playoffs as the 7th best team in the league. We missed the playoffs as the 14th best team in the league. And then the next four teams after us made it in because they were all in the Western Conference. So... Yay NHL, you better give me some kind of lottery pick at the end of this episode because I am not happy about that. Anyways, we could just sim to the draft, but instead we are going to go into the AHL calendar, get into it with the Markham Lions here, see if they can even beat the Laval Rockets. It's again, it's a five game series, not a seven to, to, for the first round of the AHL playoffs, so... Two games in Laval, how do they go, and Jaden Emery instantly gets injured, but we win game one, and we lose game two, so the second game loss was pretty bad, but a 1-1 uh, a split on the road is not terrible. Unfortunately, the Lions are facing elimination here, and do they stay alive? They do. Okay, so we're going to jump into a uh, slow sim here because the Lions were actually able to survive against the Rockets here, and uh, Gryanov is actually playing quite well at the moment. So, you know, I just want to jump in, check out the lines quickly here, because there are a few things I want to, you know, edit, change, do that kind of thing. Uh, that top line needs a little bit of work for sure. And as for the rest of the team, we have a ton of injuries, and it is really not helping at all here, so... Krivik's back. I, I don't even know if I said his name right, but, you know, I tried. <laughs> okay, so who else could potentially play center here? 60 face-offs, 60 face-offs, 59 face-offs. You know, 65 face-offs on Schneider is not even that bad, funny enough. So we could go like this. Okay, that just lost even more chemistry. Ouch. Okay. Um... Go like this, maybe. Change this up. Put Hrivik back in. And, okay, whatever. The lines aren't going to be good. We know that already. Um, Matsumoto is playing up on the top pairing, but really has not grown at all this season, and I am not entirely sure why. So, um, maybe he needs an NHL promotion. Maybe that's what it is, but... At this point, I really don't know. It sucks that Luke Leopold's out because he actually grew a little bit this season, had a fabulous 70-point uh, season, and then broke his leg. So, yeah, game five here of the first round of the AHL playoffs. Do the Lions survive? We will find out in just a second. So first period, Jordan Wheel scores, and uh, still down one nothing end of the second. So the Lions are not looking like they're in a great spot right now. Uh, they're going to have to score some goals here if they want to win this game. And, uh, well, missing power play opportunities does not help our odds of winning this game at all. And there you go. Jordan Wheel scores his second of the game, even though we outshot the Laval Rockets. So, unfortunately, Markham is going to see a first-round AHL exit this season. Empty net there from Barber seals the deal. And, uh, well... I guess we're going to just head into the draft at this point because that was a little sad. I mean, as a first-year AHL franchise, I'm not, like, ridiculously upset or anything like that. Uh, Capital swept the Sabres, geez, okay. Um, but, yeah, no, it, it wasn't a great series. Anyways, we're going to sim to the draft. We're going to see who uh, wins the Cup, who wins the Calder Cup, and uh, how that goes. Uh, okay. So, guys, as the EA Sim Engine would have it, the Detroit Red Wings win their 
I believe it's their 12th Stanley Cup in franchise history. And the Laval Rockets win the Calder Cup. So at least we lost to the best team. But, like, hold on just a second. Like, what actually happened here? I am very interested to see. So before the lottery kicks in, how did Detroit win? I, I have nothing against the Red Wings. It's just they're dead last in the league right now. How does that happen? They beat Colorado. They beat Winnipeg. They beat Anaheim. Anaheim was in there too. What, <laughs> what is going on? Like, what is actually going on? I don't even have words to explain this. Okay, so Detroit... Uh, what? Dylan Larkin has a Conn Smythe performance, but how? How is that even possible? Like, actually, how is that possible? The Red Wings have got to have, like, an insanely good roster here. Like, what the heck? Okay, I'm going to go to edit players just to see how the Red Wings just won the cup because I cannot explain that to you guys. Detroit. Detroit. Just, oh my god. Oh my god. Dylan Larkin, you abs... What, what happened to this franchise? They just took off. Do they have like a, a goalie or somebody who's insane? Well, Jimmy Howard's alright, but... It, it's just one of those things where it's like morale just kicks in and a team just m murders everybody else. That's what just happened here because 93 rated Dylan Larkin. Holy crap. And he's got four years left on his contract. The Red Wings just won the Stanley Cup. That's a shocker. We finished with the 15th pick. Didn't move up at all, of course. And, um, well, Los Angeles moves up seven picks. Ottawa moves up three with San Jose's pick. And Nashville moves up four. Poor Arizona, Minnesota, and New York, and Columbus. Wow. Wow. That is, um, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So I don't know who we're trading with now. We're going to be moving players. We know that's going to happen because there are some good players in this draft. We're obviously not landing the number one pick, but um, you know, a two or three there with those defensemen would not be terrible. And um, I don't know, one, how our team didn't make the playoffs, and two, ended up like this. Like, what? <laughs> okay, so... I don't know who the best option is going to be here. Like, I do want to go for a top prospect. Preferably Stefan Raquel. Uh, Clinton Flynn honestly wouldn't be terrible either, but he's not a righty. Whereas Raquel Flynn, or er, Raquel Flynn, Stefan Raquel is. Um, I mean, like, with our pick, we wouldn't even land Tim Stutzel. So. We're definitely going to be trading up. Um, there's good prospects all the way up to the 8th pick, I guess. And then, I don't know where our other pick has landed, but by the looks of it, we're either going to take Nylander or Kerslake here. Kerslake's small, though, but he's got a 3-year ETA. Um, yeah, I'd prefer to take Nylander. Uh, but there's there's a lot of good players in here still, like a lot of top 6 kind of supporting cast players that we can draft. As far as other elites go, I think there's really only like one or two goalies who actually have a chance at being elite. Besides that, I don't think there's really a lot of players. We know Nick Malik's going to be good. Um, Ilya Grigorenko is kind of the guy that I'm looking at as far as goalies go, but he was a high elite. Oh, there we go. Samsonov is actually an elite. Only one of the drafts so far that's not in the first round, so we will be taking him at some point. Um, Novak, I know, is like a top nine. He's not going to turn out. Bednar, we know, is good. Same with Venkateshin. Okay, so we got... Okay, okay, and Kemp. Kemp looks pretty good, too. So we got some decent 
Uh, we got a decent prospect pool in here to try to pick up, but overall, not the most exciting draft. It's not terrible, but it's not fabulous either. Like, usually there'll be one or two elites in the first round that go late, and you're just like, whoa, where did that guy come from? That kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, by the looks of it, not not an awful draft, but not great. <laughs> so it, you know, it, it also sucks that, um, also sucks that we're going to have to trade up. But uh, let's see who retires. Hosa, Marlowe, Zetterberg... Marion Hosa had a lot of points. So did Patrick Marlowe. But they played a lot of games, to be honest. They're both lottery picks, I believe. Yeah. In 1997. Jeez. Okay. As far as goalies go for retirees, nobody really. So, yeah. Not uh, not a crazy kind of draft or anything like that. Matt Molson retires on the Predators. And, you know what? I'm not going to do interviews this year. We just uh, we, we kind of know what we're getting here with the draft already. And, well, by the looks of it, oh, well, there we go. Now Matsumoto decides to grow. Hits an 83, so now he's a top four defenseman. Uh, that's a little bit better. <laughs> no question there. But um, I think the guys we will be looking to move, actually, we're going to be trading a lot of guys still. Like, that's just, that was one of the rules I implemented was that within three years, all these guys have got to be gone. They've played one season so far. So they only got two left on. We, we only have two seasons left on all of these guys, including our goalies, um, except for you know Abister, and Robin Lehner's contract has expired, so we can't even trade him. And we will find out where our picks sit coming up here right away once we hit the draft. But I do want to trade up to the as high as the second overall pick to land. Um, what's his name? I want to try and land. Uh, Raquel preferably but at the same time we could also go for wingers that are a little bit later like Lucas Raymond guys like that um, you know I'm interested in a couple players here oh by the looks of it okay by the looks of it the Predators want to trade that first so we can try something here I mean they want Leopold they want Henrique so how would we do this? The other thing I need to check is where did our picks land? So 15 and 20. Nothing insane. Honestly, I would kind of like to keep those picks. But, you know, if we could go the 15th and Henrique for the first. Yeah, no. I did not think that was going to go through. But, you know, it was worth a shot. Um, see, the only problem with me trading up for the first is that I'm probably not going to take... Um, What's his name? I'm probably not going to take Lafreniere. I'm probably going to take that other guy instead. So, uh, I don't exactly want Lafreniere to end up in Nashville either. Like, he, it wouldn't be bad to pick up a Canadian winger like that because he has the potential to become a franchise player. But I just, I don't see that working out either. Like, okay, let's try Fox and Henrique rejected so let's try fox henrik and like well like a 47th would that work that wouldn't be bad that wouldn't be bad okay so that's not bad i guess we could yeah like we could take lafreniere it's just that he only hits an 80 rating and doesn't grow at all so versus a guy like stefan raquel we could potentially, you know, pick up and he would very easily be a better player right off the bat than Lafreniere. So, mm, do we take two defensemen number one overall in a row or do we take this winger who is just absolutely insane? We know he's going to be insane even though he doesn't have any scouting reports done on him. Ugh, man. I don't, I don't know, like, I think we take Lafreniere just for value, and if, uh, well, I mean, if, ugh, I'm stuck now on a decision, guys, because we just traded up for a first, not a first, but the first overall pick, um, and then our 
15th is going to land us. Actually, those two players are probably going to end up in our team too. Dang it, I want the defenseman, but I want the elite winger to play alongside... Uh, what's his name too? To play alongside Leopold. Mm. Mm, our defense is good enough. I'm going with Lafreniere for now. So 80 rated. Yes, he's a high elite. Did we mess up? No, not really. Like... 79's not bad at all. I would definitely take that. He's a, he's going to be a sick player in a couple of years. But, you know, for how good Lafreniere is going to turn out to, I'm fairly happy with how that went. Um, and by the looks of it, he's the highest rated player in the draft. There were two other 79's in here, Burmistrov and Flynn. Thank God uh, Otto actually lands a proper pick instead of taking Ponomarov. Or Pon yeah, Ponomarov. That would have been so bad. I mean, it sucks for Arizona because, you know, they're a bit of a rebuilding franchise too. But um, I think for this next round, oh, I want to take Nylander because he's a sick-looking winger. And he's actually got decent size to him as well. And by the looks of it, I think he's got a good shot, doesn't he? Oh, maybe not. Oh, he's, he's got B shooting there. So that's not, like, awful. Um, the problem with Curse Lake is he's undersized, so he's not going to play as much. Versus a guy like Della... Della... How do you say that? Rivera? Della... Della Rivera? Ross Della Rivera. Okay. He's a defensive defenseman, too. So maybe we're better off taking wingers. I don't know. Like, I know medium top four defenders just never grow in this game. So I think the player we are going to go for is going to be, we're going to draft way out of order here. And we are going to go with Nylander. I just think he's going to be one of the better picks here. 64, not awful, but, you know, for a 15th overall pick, you usually expect a little bit more. Oh, we could have taken Jean-Luc Foudy too. Oh, well, um, Nylander I think will still be good. And then with this next pick, see, we could take Curse Lake. We could take a lot of different guys. We got options here, but I just want to make sure that we actually land uh, the players that I've got pinned here. So let's see. All right, guys. So in order to land all the players that I am attempting to pick up, we are going to offer some trades here. Uh, we're looking for picks around the 110 mark as well as, well, there's a couple players. So around 110, Anaheim's not great there. Uh, who's got a pick around 110? There we go. That's the team we're looking to trade with. Pick up those two and then, okay. So if we could grab their two fourths and a fifth. In exchange for, I don't need my 6th or 7th rounder at all. There's just nobody good in those rounds. So if we could go with those two, and then... Um, let's see, who do they want to pick up? Um, honestly, Leipzig would not be terrible to get rid of as well. And they take that. Alright, so that was actually a pretty decent trade. And now we are going to make our 20th pick here. I know I kind of I, I spent some time debating who I'm going to take here, but I think in the end we're going to go with uh, Braxton Walton just because he's got the highest chance of turning out to be a really good player. 65 overall, not bad, actually better than Nylander, funny enough. And then looking through the rest of the players that we just missed out on, um, I'm not upset at all like we... I mean, yeah, Baron would have been all right, but medium top fours never seem to turn out. Klo is a nice pick there by Vegas, 26th overall. That's a that's a nice little player there. And then second round, nothing insane, but you know, decent players throughout. We are going to be taking this medium top six potential um, Noel Gunler. Actually, Gunler's got a pretty bad ETA. So do most of these guys. The guys in this round, so. Yeah, not much we can really do. Oh, we could try and take Nathaniel Boyle. But there's a very good chance that he becomes a medium 9 instead of a medium 6. So that's kind of the risk that I am riding right now. And I don't want to take that risk. So we are going to take Gundler. 
Because, you know, at least we'll end up with a decent AHL player if he doesn't pan out. But, yeah, ugh, 59's not great. Okay. Over to pick 79 now. Uh, there's Grigorenko. We just missed him. And uh, he was a starter. So, didn't exactly miss out on much. Um, what was his rating? 57. Okay. So, Vancouver gets a decent tendy there. But uh, Nick Malik was actually a better goalie than Grigorenko. For the rest of the second round, what did we miss? Uh, Tinnen is actually a pretty good goalie, 60 overall already. Besides that, doesn't look like much. Looks like we did all right there. So the next pit player I'm going to be picking up here is a little bit out of order, but not really, to be honest. Wait, who is a... I just saw a gem in here. Was it Suni? Who is a gem? I just saw a gem, or was that just the bust? That was the bust, okay. So we are taking Vitaly Samsonov in uh, the third round here with the 79th overall pick. He's a medium elite sniper. Does have a five-year ETA, but hopefully he can grow quickly in our AHL system because, well, 56 overall, that's not too bad. And he is just 18 years old, uh, six feet tall already, so he should be able to make his way in the AHL over the next few seasons. I'm very happy with that potential. And then Dalawal, that's actually a funny name, Dalliwal, or however you want to say it. Um, by the looks of it, Vitaly Samsonov's kind of going to be one of the steals of this draft. Suni's not bad, but I mean, for a third rounder, that's very solid there in Samsonov, even though he is only 56 rated. We're going to be just fine without him. I am going to take a guaranteed starter here in Jan Bednar. Um, you know, he's also six foot four, so he's going to be a good goalie for years to come. Can definitely back up one of our elites. And besides him, I think there was, yeah, there's a couple other guys we're going for here. So at pick 109, we're going to go for Venkateshin. Dorian Venkateshin, um, if you remember from the uh, last draft of Glory Series, we had another Venkatesh, and I believe he was a two-way forward instead, but you know, 55 overall is not too bad for a low elite. I'm fairly happy with how he has turned out as well, so Dorian Venkatesh, and very nice little pick there, and then we are also going to land another low elite here in Jeff Kemp, uh, five-year ETA, 6'1", defensive defenseman, and he is 50 rated, so I mean, we're bringing in the talent. Um, it's more just if the uh, ratings can get up there eventually, that's more what we're looking. Oh my gosh, Clemson! I guess uh, I guess Arizona kind of, you know, got their got their karma back here because 68 rated. That's pretty darn solid for a fifth rounder. That would actually be the steal of the draft right there. Arizona's pick. My God, 68, 68. How did everybody miss him? How did everybody miss Kelly Clemson? That is whew, that is a very nice pick for that team. My gosh, the Arizona Coyotes are going to be happy with him in the future. Besides those guys, we have only got one or two picks left here. We're going to take a risk on Warren Rupp. We're going to see if he actually becomes an elite goalie or not. And he's a medium starter. Okay, so he's actually higher rated than Jan Bednar. Funny enough, but he's not quite on that same size level of, you know, six foot four, six foot five. But for our last pick of the draft here, we're going to go quite a bit out of order and land a player that, you know, doesn't have crazy potential, but should be pretty solid here. Could at least play in the AHL here. Zachariah Quiet Kwiatkowski. It's Kwiatkowski. That's how you say it. And he's an offensive low four defenseman, 51 rated. But, um, you know, that's pretty solid still. I'm happy with all the picks we've landed. We do not have any more picks in this draft. And, uh, well, as you can see, uh, I don't think we're missing out on a whole lot. So we're going to sim to the next round again, check out the entire sixth round, and then we won't really get to see the seventh round. But honestly, I'm not expecting much. There's only low players going in here now, and none of them are actually elite so pretty darn solid if I do say so for a draft and uh yeah I mean the players we landed are going to have some potential gonna be able to come into our team eventually and make a difference 
the guys I'm looking at, especially for being able to become difference makers, I mean, Lafreniere is going to be instant. There's no question on that. But guys like Samsonov, Bednar, Vanka Teshin, and Kemp even, maybe even Rupp. Like, we got some good young talent here from this draft, and I'm very happy with it. Didn't build on the defensive side of our team a lot, but that'll be for drafts to come. So I'm fairly happy with how this has gone. We kept Mark Giordano as well, so we could be able to trade him for a possible uh, pick or something along those lines. Connor Sheary gets up to an 84, so he is also trade bait. We actually have quite a few guys here who will become trade bait for other teams in the future. And, well, overall, our team's actually looking fairly solid here. So, I, it's not like I was expecting anybody, you know, like crazy good out of the first draft or two. But uh, I'm fairly happy with how the team is starting to shape up. And we got the re-sign phase now. So, by the looks of it, only Vince Dunn here is really looking for a contract. Everybody else is more or less kind of satisfied with their deals. Connor Sherry's played one year with our team. We're going to offer him another two at five and a half million a year. And, you know, he should accept that. It's not like a ridiculous amount of money we're offering him, but it's a solid little bit of money there. Um, Vinny Hinestroza actually got all the way up to an 82. So pretty darn solid there, Vinny, I got to say. And he wants four million. So we'll offer him a one-year deal. As far as, yeah, no, Vince Dunn, unfortunately, we can only offer you up to two years. So we'll go two years, four million for Vince Dunn, and uh, you know he will probably be getting traded fairly soon. Uh, Nemesnikov does not want a contract. Okay, so we can let him walk. That's totally fine with me. He's a UFA. We're gonna bring Lafreniere in instead. A guy like Robbie Fabry still holds some solid contract value. Nothing insane though. Like at the amount of money he's requesting, we know he's not gonna be a great trade piece, but. Um, yeah, Ugh. these guys are really asking a lot of money for not doing all that much. And um, we're going to offer it to them just because we need to be able to trade them later. So Zadarov does not want to re-sign. I'm honestly just going to offer him an RFA. And uh, God, Ferk, you're not worth that much, buddy. You're not worth one and a half million. You're like an AHL player for us. Paul Byron absolutely dropped off. Hit a wall, to be honest. And uh, Braxton Walton and Nylander here. What's his name? Robert Nylander. Both going to get contract offers here. Same with Copeland. Or Coupland, sorry. And Gunler. All these guys will be in our AHL team next year. Samsonov, Venkateshin. We got some decent depth here in this team now as far as young draft picks go. And I'm honestly pretty happy with it. So a lot of these guys will actually get some playtime, funny enough, uh, just because we don't have any depth in our system. By the looks of it, Robin Lehner does want to re-sign, so we can offer him exactly what he wants there on the two-year deal. As far as... Uh, Corot goes, we'll offer him that $1 million contract, and then Ibister, he is going to come in and actually get some playing time this year. As you can see, he's kind of on the same contract deal as Rupp there, or not contract deal, but rating level as Rupp. Uh, as you can see, Matsumoto's jumped way up in our team as far as defensive depth goes, and that's really good to see. As far as the rest of our defense goes, I mean, our defense is solid. Don't get me wrong, it's solid, but it's not like stand out, wow, that's one of the best defense in the league. Not yet, because Matsumoto will be the leader of, you know, eventually one of the best defenses in the league. But as of right now, yeah, Hamilton's not off to a great start. That was expected, to be honest. So no centers expiring. We will probably need to sign one more center here just because we only have three. As far as left wingers go, we got the depth there on the side. Same with right wingers, to be honest. Like, we got depth on the wings. And defense, yeah, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. We're going to trade Giordano most likely. But, you know, at the same time, I'm not exactly worried about our team. So, Connor Sheary resigns. Uh, Robin Lehner resigns. Gryanov, Hinestroza. Vince Dunn, Robbie Fabry, Carol, Furk, Lafreniere gets uh, his entry level. Same with Gunler, 
Venkateshin, Ibitzer, Samsonov, Coupland, Kemp, Nylander, Kwiatkowski, Walton, and that is everybody. Okay, so let's sim over to the free agency now. Um, I'm not expecting much, to be honest. Free agency is usually pretty sad. So uh, let's see. Let's see how this goes. So we're going to leave Mark Stahl on the trade block for now. But, you know, no one's going to want him, obviously. He's just too much money. <laughs> so let's see who is uh, in free agency here that we could pursue. So, ooh. Hello, um, trade piece, question mark? <laughs> More than a question mark, he's a definite trade piece. Um, but I do see a center in here that we could, you know, potentially sign that actually looks pretty decent. Is that Ryan Strom? It is, okay. Um, you know, Max Domi looks pretty darn good, too. There's a lot of guys that look pretty good in here, so... What about goalies? Because, you know, usually there's a Braden Holtby or somebody just ridiculous ridiculously good in here um doesn't look like it so i think what we're gonna do here we've got what 16 and a half million okay so i think what we're gonna do here oh montreal might not have cap space but no we don't want to go for rfas that's not a good idea okay so guys my plan here is going to be to sign uh Petrangelo in place of Giordano as well as sign Granlin to actually play for our team actually maybe not but you know we'll sign Granlin possibly use him as a trade piece and then see with the addition of uh, Petrangelo into our team that allows us to either trade players or do things like that that we wouldn't be able to before I still want to keep depth in the AHL, but I want other guys playing here too. So, Granlin's a possible trade piece. Uh, Giordano will be a trade piece. But, you know, see, I'd sign Granlin and then trade him because there are other teams interested, such as Arizona. But, honestly, we don't need an insane center. We could honestly just stick with like an 81, 82 rated center, have other guys grow. So, yeah, like Jumbo Joe would be an awesome player to pick up and honestly if you could get a scout out of that that's totally worth it so first things first we're gonna go and uh you know attempt this deal here so we're only gonna go three three years here but uh we're gonna go ten and a half million for alex petrangelo see if he accepts that or not next player we're gonna go for is gonna be grandland here we're gonna offer him three years at seven and a half million honestly i think he will take that um but we are gonna have to trade some other pieces too to get these deals done so the first uh player we're looking to move is mark giordano i've said that multiple times already his value is decreasing even though he is a 91 overall looks like not a lot of teams want him so i think it's more based on the contract rather than the rating so that's why I think teams are kind of like, uh, Giordano, I don't know. Like, let's see, who wants him? Boston, they're over the cap. Uh, anybody else? Florida, who are also over the cap. Montreal, okay. Um, that is a possible destination, especially with the picks they've got up on the block there. They are considered a contender. Um, who else? Philly wants him. They actually have the room for him, too, right now. But, you know, I've seen Philly just absolutely fall apart before it happens. Uh, but we're just looking for draft picks at this point. Um, ooh, Washington's got some picks up there. I don't think any of them are Vancouver's. Yeah, no, none of those are Vancouver's picks. So that's not possible. Winnipeg, yeah, we went for Winnipeg last year, didn't exactly turn out. So I think the best option here is going to be a team like Florida, maybe, where, you know, we could just pull some, like, nice picks off of them. Uh, they don't have a ton of picks, to be honest. What about the Canadians? Do they have picks? Because if they have picks, I'm going to go for picks. <laughs> Ugh, they don't. Like, they really don't. 
but they are willing to trade any of their picks here in the next couple seasons. So honestly, if we could just move Giordano straight up for like two first round picks, as well as like, there's a lot of options. We go first, second, first, second, third, and then first, second. That's a ton of picks. And it's damn nearly equal too. That's the funny thing. That we could go like this. And okay, they say it's too far off. So if we go two firsts and a second in exchange for Giordano, still rejected. Okay, is it really only worth two firsts? I mean, it's not terrible. It's Montreal's firsts, so you know we could really get something out of that still. Oh, okay. So they're not taking that. Um, how about I offer you a, you know, like sixth rounder with that? Nope, <laughs> they're not taking that. Okay. Third rounder. I don't want to trade that third rounder. Ay, 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 Montreal, you have your picks up on the block. You say you want Giordano, and then you don't offer him to me. Like, what are you, what are you doing here, buddy? Okay, so two firsts for Giordano. Is that still an option? Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll see if Florida becomes a serious contender out of that or not. But, you know, Giordano was our leading scorer there out of free agency. And uh, we are going to go and offer Jumbo Joe a contract. As he is pretty cheap. He's going to be like $3 million for one year. And actually, you know what? We'll go $3 million for two years. Hopefully he'll retire in that time. If he doesn't retire, by the time he's 42, I'm going to be a little surprised. Especially since Marlo just called his retirement, so... Let's see. We're going to advance some days here. And... Jumbo Joe does not want to join our team. Granlin does. Petrangelo does. Okay. That's good. Okay, so as far as our remaining options go here now, I mean, 82 Derek Broussard... He's got the potential to grow, but I seriously doubt that is going to happen. Um, again, I'd rather go with Jumbo Joe here. So if we go two years, three and a half, I think that's about right. And because he rejected it, so his other goal, he said, was to win now. And, you know, we all know that's not going to happen, but, you know, it's possible with teams like Detroit. We've watched them do it just now, so. Our team status goes back up to hopeful. It's not insane, but, uh, you know, Petrangelo is the best player there. Pretty much, I don't know about all three, but, you know, Laner, we're going to shop around. There's no question there. Um, I honestly wouldn't be, like, upset getting a, you know, like, backup kind of goalie and then just playing Saros, like, almost full-time in exchange for laner uh i think we keep petrangelo around just for a year here to uh get matsumoto really going get him on a roll i think that's what we're gonna do and then as far as the rest of the team goes like nothing crazy here we got solid players um granlin we're gonna move like fairly soon here because otherwise i get the feeling we're actually gonna win <laughs> um and I do want Luke Leopold. That's the other thing, is I want Leopold in the lineup. So, you know, maybe we trade a guy like Lowry or somebody like that instead. Who, you know, they're still a good player. We'll check it out once we get the next kind of season going here. But, yeah, we're kind of more looking on the side of racking up first-round picks here. We still have... We can... Uh, grab up to two more first round picks for this upcoming draft like first rounders and then as far as second third fourth rounders go we could definitely use some more so i want to get lafreniere and leopold playing together at some point here that would be very nice um i think they'll honestly play quite well together in the long run um you know being a first and a second overall they should be able to lead this team's offense and well, we'll see. I guess we'll see how it goes. So, 
I'll be looking for teams who have picks up on the block that are not, you know, like champions. <laughs> God, everybody who's got their first up is either a contender or a champion. You know, if we could go Lowry in exchange for the Leafs first rounder, honestly, that would just about go through. That's a really sad that's a really sad thought. <laughs> okay. So what else can we offer them that is equivalent in value? But you know, they gotta clear some cap. They're paying so many guys too much money. Like Like a guy like Shahan for that much. Yikes, Toronto. Yikes. Okay. So, you know, we're adding a little bit of depth to Toronto, but at the same time, we are potentially landing you know, like a really good player here. We could throw Zadarov in there, and they don't want the RFA, I guess. So, yeah. Um, who's on like an entry level kind of deal still here that's not going to be stupid expensive? Like these guys, yikes. Okay, that's not who I want to trade. What about a goalie? Oh, that's what we could do. We got enough goalies here. You know, we could try Jan Bednar. I mean, he is two years younger than Rupp. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to try Rupp. See if they take that. And they do. Okay. So, you know, not the most insane trade, but we add Shahan as a, uh, most likely a AHL uh, center. We're going to sim to the next season now. We've kind of got our trades out of the way here. By the looks of it, Zadorov's going to start in the AHL again here because um, he does want to play. Maybe he'll jump right back up to an 82 and we'll have a more trade value there on our defense, but I doubt it. That was actually an offer from Mark Stahl right there. Damn. So I have to say, guys, that last season was by far one of the craziest seasons I have seen in a long time on this game. And, well, to be honest, Detroit won the Cup, so what do you expect? We land Lafreniere. That's actually really good for our team. I think he's going to be good in the long run. I always seem to have struggles with Lafreniere, so we will see if he can actually grow properly in this game or not. And here are our owner goals. So 25 sellouts this year on home ice. Uh, win 18 road games, okay, and have an average 85% hand, hand, fan happiness from the concession. Oh, Lord. Okay, this uh, this is not looking great as far as the lines go. So Leopold very obviously fits the first line better than what is currently going on there. What if we go like, ugh, can we get some chemistry, please? So that's about it for editing the lines, really. I'm actually quite happy with the way things have turned out here. Um, we really have a solid lineup throughout. And I think the Tigers might actually be competing a bit more than we originally intended here. So I think they've named the Captain Petrangelo here. Yeah, and I just... See, I'm still, I'm still not feeling that. Like, I would rather name... Uh, Matsumoto captain than Petrangelo but I think we're going to name him captain just for one season and uh, see how that goes from there wasn't Luke Leopold number 31 that's what I thought I thought he was number 31 but I can't remember anyways um, so yeah this is how the team is looking for now Petrangelo is going to stay there. I think we're going to end up trading Zad, uh, yeah, Zadorov, as well as, you know, Gurianov has got the possibility of being traded too. I don't think he fits anywhere in this team, really. You know, if he fits on the first line, I will keep him there over Miles Wood, but I don't think he does. Oh, he's a second liner. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go. Hinestroza has to play there. Is there a possibility Gurianov fits here? Not really. What about there? Nope. What about there? Eh. 
see, we need as much chemistry boost on Leopold as we can get. But at the same time, this is a fairly strong lineup, and I'm actually kind of happy with how it looks right now. So, Yeah. I don't know, man. I think... Is Gurianov a sniper too? He is. I think we go like this for now. Even though, yes, Miles Wood had the better, you know, uh, what do you call it? Had the better chemistry fit. It's just like, I don't see, I don't see him really contributing. We're probably going to trade him. I think we're going to keep it like this for the lineup. We're not going to change anything else. I'm seriously happy with how well, like, look, at that should be a plus five. There's no way that's not a plus five. All those guys fit the second line. And then that line really does not have chemistry. Or you could go like that. And go all ones across. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Okay, so that is the final lineup. I'm not changing this lineup unless we have injuries or similar things to that and as far as the ahl goes you know it actually looks pretty solid too i'm not upset with it in any way and yeah i think our team's gonna see a slight slight bit more success than they did last season especially when considering how poorly um how poorly a finish we had and that somehow we didn't make the playoffs so guys as far as the draft class goes we know Atu Raddy is going to be the top prospect here um, looks like there's a bunch of computer generated prospects Trevor Wong is already in the game um, yeah besides that I don't know I'm kind of expecting another pretty meh draft it's not gonna be insane I recognize a lot of these players so that's why um, I'm not exactly like bouncing off the walls about that draft but uh yeah as far as our uh as far as our team goes by the looks of it we've got a pretty we're pretty set up for this next season so in a strong division here i think we stand a solid chance still we're a hopeful team but i mean we also have what like five picks or four first round picks we have a lot of first round picks to go along with this team so no worries really as of right now by the looks of it our pick and Nashville's are still the most valuables but we do have Florida and Toronto's as well just in case they somehow tank and uh yeah that's gonna be wrapping it up so if you guys are enjoying this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode on NHL 20 go down below leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new like consider it at least uh you know I'm on trying to push for 500 subscribers here pretty soon not that far off but that is going to be it uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this is etanios sign note and see ya